be telling the story of Cinderella's Slipper, an Appalachian folktale told by a grandmother to a granddaughter in 1899, Wise County, Virginia. <clears throat> Cinderella's Slipper. Once there were three girls whose parents were dead and they lived alone. The older sister was kind and good-hearted to the two young girls, and she did all the work. <clears throat> she wouldn't let the two younger girls do anything for fear of soiling, soiling their pretty hands. These two younger girls did nothing but dress and go to parties and have a good time. Their aunt wrote to them and told them she wanted them to come down to a ball she was giving. She said her husband's nephew was to be there. He was very rich and she, she said she was sure one of the girls would capture him for her husband before they returned from their trip. She said she would send her nephew after him with her buggy and horse in time to get them there for the ball. The oldest sister said she could not go because she had to do her milking and housework, but the other two younger girls must go. The girls, did, did, the girls didn't have any dresses fit to wear to the ball. They had to see they had seen better days through that, though during their mother's life the two sisters began to cry because they had no dresses to wear. The oldest sister told them not to cry because they had a chest of costly clothes that belonged to their mother and she would make some for them over the over for them to wear. She had them clothes to wear as nice as anybody wore them that day. They answered the aunt's invitation telling her that the two younger sisters were coming. The aunt answered back saying it was three weeks till the ball, but that when the, the time came, she would send the nephew with her horse and buggy to take them to the ball. The morning arrived for them to go to the ball. The nephew came for, came for them and the young girls were eager to meet him. The older sister was in the kitchen. She didn't feel worthy to meet them. She felt she was plain, old-fashioned, and had on her work dress. So she hid in the den and didn't come from the kitchen to meet them. The aunt had told the nephew to get her two nieces to the ball and had not said anything to him about her other niece who did the work of the home. When they were ready to start, the older sister slipped out to bid her sisters goodbye and he saw her. He asked her to go to the ball too. He begged and asked why she couldn't go. He also wanted to shake hands with her. She hid her hands behind her back and told him they were too naughty and warm from the work that she does to shake his hand. The nephew said it made no difference. He wanted to shake hands and still begged her to go to the ball. She felt he was only trying to be kind, but she told him it was impossible for her to go since she had to work to do and in the home and also she had milking to do. When they started, she kissed her sisters goodbye and followed them to the buggy and watched them get in again. After they had started, she pulled off one of the slippers and threw them after them for good luck. She threw it harder than she thought and it fell into the young man's lap. The two sisters didn't see it and he quickly slipped it in his pocket. After they had gone, she went to the spot and searched for the slipper, but it was nowhere to be found. She returned to the house and put the slipper on of another kind. The two sisters stayed with their aunts for three weeks and returned. The nephew didn't bring them, but promised to come soon to see them. The two younger sisters always slept late while the other sister did her work. One morning they slept unusually late. They slept upstairs, and when one of them arose and looked out the window, she saw the young man coming. She told her sister he was coming, and they hurried to dress and make their toilet and make their selves ready before he came in. The older sister opened the door. She told him the girls were upstairs and he'd be down soon. He said, I didn't come to see the girls. You're the one I came to see. She told him he must be mistaken that she had no time to spend with anyone, but she had the work to do and that she was sure her sisters were expecting him. He took the slipper from his pocket and told her that it was his children, that it was Cinderella's slipper and that he had come to claim the mate to it. When she saw it, she cried, where did you get my poor little slipper that I hunted for so long? He told her, when they threw it after the girls, it fell in my lap and I put it in my pocket and have treasured it ever since. My Cinderella slipper. He avowed and he wouldn't claim to mate to it, and he had loved her more the first time he saw her and wanted to make her his bride. She told him that she was careworn with work not fit to marry, that she was sure one of the other girls would make a better bride, that she could care for herself. He told her 
That was the reason he loved her, that he liked both girls but loved only her. He was seated holding her in his arms when the other girls came into the room. They said, we're sorry we kept you waiting so long. But when they saw their sister in his arms, they were surprised. They couldn't say anything, he said. That all, that's all right, girls. You've not kept me waiting at all, and your sister has just promised to be my bride. The older sister began to cry, for she had been a mother of the younger sister since their mother had died. She asked them to forgive her, but she didn't mean to wrong them. Then he said, she's the only one I can marry, and showed them the slipper. This is my Cinderella slipper, and I've come to claim the mate to it and ask you the one who wore it. The younger sisters took her, told her that they had nothing to forgive, that if she was happy, that she deserved it. They said, you've deprived yourself of happiness for our sake. It will be hard for us to learn to work and care for ourselves, but we'll learn to do it. Only those who promise to come visit us often. The older sister promised and left them to get married and live happily ever after. <clears throat> I chose the story because most children know the story of Cinderella. And it's a good story to compare with some other Cinderella stories in other cultures. Um, I thought this would be great for fifth grade social studies because I found the standard 6A-5. They compare cultural characteristics across historical time periods in the United States. And this was really cool. I chose to do this um, story in kind of an accent, the best that I could do, um, because I'm just imagining this grandmother in 1899 telling this to her granddaughter. And so she's in the Smoky Mountains, so in the Appalachian Mountains. So she needs, I figured they would have an accent, and I'm trying to make it come to life as best as I could. Thank you.